Well, hey guys, this is the third and final installment of my chip amplifier videos. I'll make amplifiers videos in the future, but you know, for now, for this quick succession of videos, this is the final installment. And the quick review here is, well, in the first video, I built a complete amplifier with case using the TDA-2003 with a 12.6 volt supply and a 4 ohm load. You can get about four clean watts of power out of them. And uh, I don't use clipping or anything. It's got to be clean power. You know, some manufacturers rate them at 10% distortion, which is kind of useless for me. But anyway, clean power. Then we looked at this chip here. You know, they make a whole bunch of different types. It's a stereo bridge type amplifier and they're kind of nice because with a 12.6 volt supply 4 ohm loads you get about 12 clean watts out of them so nice if you need a little bit more power so now we're going to look at this type of chip this is a TDA 7264 not a lot of pins on it but it's a stereo amplifier all in one chip. What's uh, kind of unique about this? Well, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of pins. It's you get two channels built in. It is a fixed gain amplifier. That's why there's not that many pins on it. But it does keep the part count low. So let's uh. Let's look at the circuit here. Well, the gain is set internal. You can see the negative feedback resistors are internal to the chip. And the uh, inverting inputs are not brought out to pins. So there's no way to set the gain on this. So in other words, you're, you have to use, you're stuck with a uh, fixed gain. I think it's 30 decibels. But, you know, that's not bad. 30 decibels is great if you're making a amplifier or using line inputs. You know, just add a volume control and you're ready to go. However, with a music player like an iPod, those headphone stereo things, they, the maximum output is around, you know, 500 millivolts RMS. And with 30 decibels of gain doesn't quite drive the amplifier loud enough when you turn it up. You really need around 40 decibels of gain. It does depend on the actual output of your amplifier. But uh, in this case, you'd really need 40 decibels of gain. So they actually make a TDA-7265. It's the same amplifier, but they bring the inverting inputs out as a pin and you can use your own resistor network to set the gain. Now these chips are, you know, starting to get into what I call the hi-fi realm. What is hi-fi? It's not really a defined, you know, there's really not a definition that I'm aware of which says something is hi-fi or, you know, where the borderline between performance is hi-fi and when it's not. Well, these chips here, the uh, TDA-2003 and the bridge chip here, their distortion performance, well, they can make under 1%, but above 0.1% distortion, non-clipping, of course. So, you know, that, to me, that's pretty good, but it's not really hi-fi. We're This type of chip can actually make distortion under 0.1% as long as you lay out the circuit correctly. Now the first thing you see when you look at the data sheet you'll see this 25 by 25 watts into 8 ohms. I don't know why they use a W. I, I think one of the Greek symbols for Omega is looks kind of like a W so maybe that's why they do that. With a supply voltage that should be plus minus 20 volts Total harmonic distortion of 10%. What? Well, the reason they do that is to inflate the numbers. 
they want to say 25 by 25 watt stereo amplifier. <laughs> but with a uh, the proper power supply voltage and you know proper load, proper layout, you can probably get 20 watts per channel, maybe 22 watts per channel before clipping. So you know none of this crap. You know if you clip any amplifier, it's going to make horrendous distortion. And they're obviously pushing this thing into clipping. So just ignore this crap here. It's just a way to inflate the numbers. Of course, they do that with these car stereo chips. Pretty much standard. They always rate them like at 10% distortion so they can put up big numbers. Another thing with these chips, you're starting to get into the hi-fi realm, or quote, hi-fi, unquote, realm, is... They need dual supplies. In other words, you need a positive voltage, a ground, and a negative voltage. So they call that dual rail supply or split supply. Now it's probably possible to make this a single supply, but you'd have to add output coupling capacitors and a voltage divider for the ground reference but we won't get into that. So yeah, very simple chip to use. And I'm gonna lay it out on the breadboard here and hook it up. Well, here's the circuit. Not really much at all. Of course, like I said, there's no feedback capacitors because it's on this chip it's handled inside. And it's just a film capacitor's input power supply decoupling, and the Zobel output network. Now there's one little issue with this chip. I don't like the way they implement the mute circuit on these things. Yeah, look at this circuit for the mute. They do this because it's driven from a microcontroller. You know, electronics these days are computer controlled. So to control this chip, they have several resistors, a transistor, and it's all just controlling the voltage to this mute pin. Well, I really don't use mute on my amplifiers, but unfortunately you just can't tie this high to make it work. It has to work within a certain range of voltage. And they explain that here. So... I won't say get into everything because the video is getting long, but to ma to set this amplifier for play mode, you have to have the voltage set to be less than the supply voltage minus six volts. And yeah, that's kind of confusing. What what they're saying is, if this is your supply, let's say you have a plus and minus eighteen volts. And, of course, in the middle is the zero-volt ground reference. They're saying you have to set the mute pin to be at least 6 volts less than the supply voltage. So if we have this plus 18 volts and we set this to be 8 volts, so we take 18 minus 8, so we have to set that mute pin to... 10 volts. Well, that's not very difficult to do. You can just use a couple resistors as a voltage divider to make that work. However, you can still run into problems with doing that. Now, if your power supply is not real stable, you know, as the amplifier is drawing heavy currents from both channels to, say, like a 4-ohm load, it could drag the power, the power supply voltage down. And what that's going to do, it could, you know, shift that mute pin voltage, you know, because the supply voltage changes. You know, that could shift it enough to cause the voltage not to be less than 6 volts and the amplifier goes into um, standby mode. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. I, I don't like the way they implement that. 
But I have come up with one solution, and that's to use a Zener diode and, of course, use high enough supply rails so that this is always going to be at least 6 volts. Now, with the Zener diode, it's, it's going to keep that fixed. You know, if you have an 18-volt supply, you put that Zener diode and then the uh, dropping resistor here on the other end, or kind of a load resistor to keep current flowing. That Zener diode will keep it at 7.5 volts as long as your power supply is stiff enough, you know, the rails are stiff enough, this will keep the amplifier running without any problems. But for now, for my example, I'm just using a couple resistors. Okay, I have all the wires connected, chip plugged into the board, mounted to the heatsink. Connected to our dual supply here. Now I'm only operating at plus and minus 10 volts with 8 ohm loads, so I don't need a real big heat sink. Now in actual practice, I would use a much beefier heat sink. Got to keep things cool. And also, if the power supply filtering caps are more than 6 inches away from the chip itself, I would add these high quality Panasonic electrolytics on the board near the chip to help with the filtering. But for now I'm just going to use what I have here. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to um, keep your power supply and signal grounds separated. If not, you can have a distortion issue or even oscillation problems. So my power outputs and my power supply are kept separate from the input signal ground here. So I ran a separate signal ground from the pin over here where I connect the input of my music player. All right, well, um, I have some ro royalty-free music ready to go. And I will hit the play button here and just give it a listen. Okay, works pretty well. Sounds good. I don't hear any problems with it, any distortion. And, uh, well, I guess that wraps it up for the series of chip amp videos. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do some more in the future. But, uh, hey, thanks a lot for watching. If you like my stuff, give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you on the next video.